Okay, so we're uh, we're ready to deal uh, with the engines now. Uh, now I've built three of the engine nacelles already, so I'm going to go through the fourth engine nacelle so you can see what I've done. Um, so the engine nacelle, just uh, just so you know, it comes in comes in two halves on the sprue. Okay, uh, you've got a cold fan and cold exhaust here, and you've got a hot section here which I've already um, assembled and painted. So all of the interior parts have so far uh, been painted. Uh, the majority of it has been done with um, this colour, which is uh, Mr. Hobby SM04 Super Stainless, um, and the um, the hot section at the rear here has been done with Super Stainless, and the rear part, just to um, be a bit darker, has been done with uh, SM03, which is Super Iron, and it's been mixed with a little bit of. Um, gear gloss black just to darken it down okay so nothing too special we just want to get that um, all that area painted metal so it, it looks okay in the finished um, uh, if anybody looks up uh, into the engines on the finished kit so we're just going to snip off the um, main engine parts or the main engine nacelles okay um, and what I'm, what I'm going to do is what I have been doing with the other ones so um, it's been working is uh, you've got some um, pins, some locating pins, okay? So I'm just going to remove those. What we're trying to do is um, make this the best fit we possibly can. And then what's going to happen is I'm just going to use one of these painter and decorator sanding pads. Now these I get from uh, eBay. They're just the uh, coarse sanding pads that painter and decorators use for, you know, um, doing skirting boards and that sort of stuff. So you can get I, you can get about twenty or twenty five of them for five pounds from eBay. I find them very useful for all sorts of modelling. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lightly sand each half of the nacelle like so. And we're checking our joining surfaces to make sure that everything's been sanded so I know that's as uh, flat as I can reasonably expect it to be, which should help with the uh, with the joining of the halves. Uh, so, so we're not really worried about removing the locating tabs. Uh, one, it, it's not terribly difficult to line it up anyway. But two, we've got these um, hot and cold fan sections which go in and they will assist with lining everything up. So I'm just going to snip both of the uh, pieces of the fan out here. And we're going to just trim to remove any of the uh, sprue marks, sprue stubs. Okay, so this hot section here just locates straight into our um, our cold exhaust section. Okay, so we're just going to drop some MEK into there, plonk that on there, and um, that's that done. This uh, this whole thing then uh, seats into our engine. There's a there's a fairly hefty locating um, recess for the uh, cold fan section to go into, so that uh, that locates into there quite uh, quite firmly. Checking the outside, the uh, hot section does line up with the rear of the uh, uh, nacelle pylon. Taking the cold fan front section, drop that in. Now you've got these two recesses here which will locate into these two recesses which as I said helps us with our alignment and um, the fit is actually really really nice. So with that um, with that in place, all I'm going to do is I'm going to run a tiny uh, little bead of um, MEK along there. Okay, just going to check the fit, check it's lined up. We can do the same with the top, like so. Okay, now you can see. Probably, I hope you can see anyway. He's a little bit bowed at the back here, but we're not worried about that because it just it will just literally. There you go. I've just squeezed it together, and it's low. It's um, it's all gone together, just fine. So we're just going to check our alignment again. Make sure everything's lined up. Make sure we've got glue along the hole of our nacelle. A little bit there. So I'm just going to pop 
a closed peg over there just for that only has to be in place for a minute or two just long enough for the glue to start biting and then there's a join here okay which is between the uh, hot section and the main uh, nacelle pylon so I'm just going to run a, a little bead of MEK into that join that's plenty <coughs> and what that's done is now that's um, secured the uh, hot section exhaust into our nacelle okay so that's the um, that's the main part of the engine nacelle done so we'll need to deal with joins when that's dried and then we've got the actual air intake part here which let's get one of the ones I've um, already assembled so I'm not risking my uh, leaving finger marks in the glue or anything so this uh, nacelle section this um, intake section locates straight into the uh, nose like so and I have to say once again it's a, it's a pretty good uh, fit pretty good match okay however let's see if I can bring you in a little bit hopefully you can see this there's a fairly uh, hefty uh, moulding mark uh, mould division mark around all four of these uh, intake parts so they're going to require a little bit of um, a little bit of work okay just a little bit of a scrape with a knife blade just to clean them up a little bit get the bulk of the uh, mould mismatch out Don't be afraid to work on this a little bit, okay? It's all solid plastic, this, so if you have to remove quite a bit, don't really worry too much about it. Okay? I'm just going to bring that a tiny little bit, because I'm aware that uh, sometimes it's going out of shot. And then all I'm going to do is take um, any sort of anything that's round, like the end of this uh, big old paintbrush here. I'm going to wrap some micro mesh around it. And then we're going to use that in there like so. And we're just going to sand that join, that division line. Uh, and it will, it will require a bit more work. Let's see if I can find another piece of... Uh, yeah, let's, let's cut that piece in half. Okay. Not that around. You might notice I'm using um, micro mesh. Micro mesh is about the only abrasive paper or soft abrasive I use these days. I get it all from uh, eBay. Um, you can get sets. You know, most model shops uh, do sets of it these days that come in various grades, um, and uh, they're, they're good little sets. But I find that I use enough that searching out. Uh, Good deals on eBay. Just makes more sense for me. So, just going to move this camera down a tiny little bit, okay? So it's um, where I'm more comfortable working, like so. So, as I say, we just keep sanding until you've smoothed and removed all the uh, the mould uh, parting line. The good thing about using uh, micro mesh is that whilst I'm using this 1500, this, this stuff I'm using here is 1500 grit, um, but it, uh, it removes material reasonably fast, but it leaves a great finish. Uh, not at all like um, uh, you know, normal wet and dry paper where it leaves a finish that then needs quite a lot of moving through finer grades and polishing and things like that. This leaves a really good finish to start with even though it's removing some reasonably significant material and it'll just require a light polish afterwards. So so 
So that's that's that done. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take one of the uh, one of these away, one of the old ones that I haven't touched yet. Right. Okay, now I might need to back off a tiny little bit till we get the focus. So I think you can probably see the mould line stuff inside that one and that's the one that I've uh, cleaned up so you can see the two together there and you can see what I've done so that will at some point when I've dealt with the other joins that will go straight in there like so give us a, a pretty good uh, join in there and then we can look at adding these uh, to the to the model so these all so these all go in like so onto the finished model and we're really starting to get our um, we're really starting to get our globe master together now just the other things I've done in the last few uh, since you last saw me these um, these streaks have been added and uh, filled and sanded through uh, but that's about it so the next thing I need to be thinking about adding the canopy uh, adding the canopy here and dealing with those join lines but for now we're, uh, we'll deal with the engines and so uh, I'll, uh, I'll come back to you and see you again when I've dealt with the rest of the engines I'm ready to assemble them and start painting them and getting them on the model so uh, take care and I'll see you then Right, so we've moved on to the engines and uh, I showed you um, actually gluing the engine the cells together last night. The inboard engines here I've um, now completely um, assembled, including the air intakes, uh, sanded all the joints and I've added the um, aerodynamic surfaces, uh, vortex generators or airflow straighteners. So um, these two are more or less completed now except for some sanding and polishing. So just wanted to go through how we how we got to that stage um, with these nacelles. So these are the outboard nacelles. So all of the initial job is just to remove um, the seam line. So I'm using a skinny sander, quite a rough one, uh, initially to deal with the majority of the uh, seam line. Remember, these have had about twenty. Four hours or so now to uh, to dry since I glued them. Turn our stick over using a slightly uh, less coarse grip now just to finish off the main body of the sanding. Now as you can see the match is pretty good because within what 30 or 40 seconds that is more or less um, sanded to where I need it. I'm going to use a, a broader uh, but finer sanding stick now. And this is all we do, we just work down through the grits, getting progressively finer. Okay, the area behind the um, hot section there needs a needs a light sanding, nothing too heavy. That's plenty, give it a light a bit of a polish there, perhaps a bit of a uh, bit of this Scotch Bright, and that is I'm, I'm happy with that how it is. So we've got the upper part of the nacelle here and a part of the pylon. Uh, so same thing again. It really does require very little effort. But what we're doing while we're sanding here is we are removing all of the um, engraved panel detail from the top of that pylon. So again with the slightly smoother side. Put 
so that's the majority there of the uh, panel uh, panels dealt with. So what I want to do now before I go any further is just restore the detail that we've lost. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this so that there we go so we're happy with what we've got so, so that you can see so the other day I showed you this knife blade okay which I've cut lots of um, slots into and uh, this is a perfect thing uh, because we've got a few panel lines across the front here that need restoring so it's literally just a case of pushing it across the centre line like so a few times till they meet Okay, and that's pretty much enough with that in place I'm just going to take my uh, RB scriber and pull it across the uh, sanded join and that's the panel line restored uh, albeit it needs a bit of um, polishing and sanding but again panel line here make sure you push it across till it meets its partner on the other side same back here again with the RB We get out a, a tad. Okay, and then on the top side we've got the same thing across the immediately in front of the pylon, like so. You can out with the uh, RB scriber. Okay, and we've got a few, uh, let's have a look, we have got one, two, three, four, five panel lines that need to go across the uh, pylon where we've uh, removed the detail with sanding. So, it's very simple, just finding the uh, point where it goes across. Again, if you place the knife blade on that uh, pylon, pull it along, you'll feel it actually drop in to the panel where it needs to be carried across and then you can just, with a light sawing motion, restore the line. So again, pull it back till you feel it lock in, and that's it. So for the final one, pull it back. So it locks in. And that's it. So if we take our finer sounding stick, you're immediately going to see where we've had the uh, where we've restored the panel lines, okay, so let's give it a little bit of a polish around, just checking so we're happy with that, so just make sure that we clear no pressure now, just under its own weight, because we're just clearing the swarf out of the panel line okay same thing underneath Maybe use a piece of our maybe use a piece of our fifteen hundred grit to give it a bit of a, a bit of a polish. Okay. Then our so that only took a few minutes, so you can see how quickly this is going together for each in the cell. So, next thing we need to do is take, uh, we need to look at um, adding the uh, 
the uh, the nose part okay which slips in not too badly like so all right so we're just going to gently trim that back okay I'm going to pull it out just a bit okay so as we discussed yesterday when I showed you these I want to uh, scrape and sand away the internal join okay so we've done that and then we're taking a piece of our um, uh, 1500 grit and wrapping it around something circular in this case you can see it's a big old uh, brush uh, I like this, this brush I've had for probably 25 years and uh, I use it for all manner of things uh, not painting but um, cleaning and, and things like that and in this instance as you can see for wrapping micro mesh around for doing things like cleaning out these uh, air intake parts so So very easily done, so I'm just checking. Uh, yeah. Use another little bit. Give it another a sounding. Here's a, a stubborn little bit of a uh, sink mark in here that uh, is requiring more work than I would like, but such is life. So let's give that another sounding. checking as you go along it really is paying attention to little things like this which will really raise the quality of your model above the mundane it's the kind of things that uh, certainly draw my eye when I'm looking at a built model and uh, definitely help with the finished appearance so that's that that's been um, gently sanded like so. So, let's see if I can. Ring you in again. Okay, so. That locates into there like that, and I think you can see it's actually a pretty good fit. I'm just going to take one of, uh, going to take my sanding block, okay? And just gently sand that meeting surface. Like so. And then we should now have a, um, a really a quite a, uh, quite a decent fit there. Now what I want to do is uh, use super glue to glue this ring in. What I don't want is super glue kind of um, spilling out onto the surface and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply super glue to this nose ring part just around the edge here. Uh, so hopefully when I actually push that into the uh, engine nacelle it's not going to squeeze out on the interior join or hopefully there'll be none or very little squeezing out on the exterior joint and it should give us a reasonably sharp uh, line 
which will help us uh, help it to look like a panel line. So, bring you out again. So, I'm going to take some uh, super glue, like so, and then using a cocktail stick, okay, we're going to Add a little bead of it onto our air intake part here, like so. And then it's just a case of lining it up with the, uh, there is a, a key way for it to locate into. It's just lining it up and pushing it home like so. Uh, and you can see that uh, the fit there is, uh, is pretty good. So what I've done when that's dry is I've um, added some uh, primer around that joint just to fill in any little uh, gaps and sanded it dry or sanded it down when it's dry, uh, polished it and then I've added the two, um, the, the two uh, flow straighteners or vortex generators or whatever they are um, and uh, to glue those in place I've uh, again used MEK and the, um, and the pin flow uh, which allowed you know, an extremely tight uh, and precise line of uh, mech to be flowed into um, the, the join there. So that's the engine, the cells, um, they'll, they'll need some uh, further work but essentially that's it done. So they're almost ready to actually go onto the model now. Um, the mating surfaces uh, here and along here are going to need a little bit of work to uh, Make sure they they go onto the model. I'm sure you can see that um, the fit is uh, somewhat less than perfect there. So we'll be doing uh, a little bit of uh, fettling and and uh, refining of that fit before we glue those into place. But at, uh, as you can see, it's. Uh, not the end of the world. So the next time hopefully we'll be uh, looking at actually adding adding those nacelles into place and, uh, and gluing them. So uh, I'll catch up with you then.